Hello. Hello, uh, my name is Esther De Leon. I'm an associate librarian at Texas Tech University Library and co-lead of the TTU research team. Our team consists of myself, Jane Sappington as lead, uh, Sarah Schumacher, Kimberly Vardaman, and Donnell Callender. We'd also like to acknowledge um, phase one contributors, uh, Marina Oliver, Hilary Veter, and Laura Hines. Um, my co-presenter today is Sarah Sch Schumacher, architecture image librarian at the architecture library here on campus. Our research and presentation is entitled Educating and Empowering a Diverse Student Body, Supporting Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Research Through Library Collections. Um, and so for the most part, we like the way we are going to present today is more of an organic kind of um, feel. Um, we'll start off by talking a little bit about what we were trying to do. Um, and so what our team tried to do was try to explore methods uh, for assessing the collections related to DEI and discoverability um, by the users um, within our own library, within the main library, because we have uh, two other um, sections. Um, the two-part project uh, surveyed uh, user needs, collections, usage, cataloging, and discoverability user behavior in searching for evalu and evaluating DEI resources. Um, and although it was a lengthy process, we were not able to really grasp a good way to assess our collections. Um, or, and so um, for a large, because we have a large scale um, collection. Um, we have over 40,000 students here at Texas Tech, and so our, our collection reflects that. Um, so uh, the key findings indicate a potential for part partnering with various colleges and departments, and we also had a need for, uh, showed a need for increased intention on cataloging and metadata, particularly the table of contents and abstract summary fields, which sometimes are not um, included in the records whenever you're downloading those uh, um, records for cataloging. Um, so our, our objectives, I guess, uh, were to explore methods for measuring library collections to support curricular goals and DEI related courses, better understand our users' behavior when searching and evaluating libraries resources related to DEI, identify successes, challenges, and areas for improvement related to libraries DEI related collections and their usability. Um, and our hypothesis were, were, was um, the library's collection provides necessary resources for teaching and study of DEI across disciplines. And so this, this, this is some of the things that we've tried to accomplish and to find out if we really do need those, uh, meet those needs. Uh, users can effectively find and evaluate DEI research resources from the TTU library website. Um, and so Sarah's gonna continue with um, our phases. So I'm going to go over our findings and some of our recommendations and conclusions. Um, so in phase one, we really tried to take um, a very holistic approach, kind of attack it from various aspects, uh, trying to figure out our collection um, and how it supports the study of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we encountered a lot of problems and in you know, our literature review, we saw a lot of other uh, librarians encountered some of these same issues and, and problems. But the kind of two key findings I wanted to uh, bring up um, is one thing we did is looked at ILL requests and ebook usage and really tried to see if there were any trends in there that were linking um, to specific disciplines. Um, so the two disciplines we kind of saw some trends for were women's and gender studies and Mexican American and Latino uh, studies. Um, so kind of looking at their usage and requests and then kind of looking at kind of their population at, within the university as a whole and we kind of identified them as areas that um, may want to collaborate with libraries that would be um, a good source for that. Now, a lot of the literature and a lot of the problems we faced was because of the discoverability of these resources. You know, DEI titles are 
you know, kind of hard to track because they can come from, you know, various disciplines. They can be looking at a whole wide range of ideas and topics. Um, and so one thing we did do is look at awards lists for DI related um, awards, um, tracked which ones we had, uh, but then also looked at our catalog records to see if they were robust enough. Um, so two of the things we looked at was the 505 or the table of contents field and the 520, which is the abstract summary field. And um, we were, you know, not happy with uh, the percentage of the records that especially had both the 505 and the 520 fields. And that was for both print and electronic resources. Um, so that really shows an impediment uh, to discovery from our users. And we used those findings as we went into phase two. Uh, originally, we were going to do more of an instruction uh, focus, um, but we pivoted to do kind of an online uh, Zoom user experience um, study. And so we had 32 participants and we asked them from the library um, page to conduct searches from their field of study, looking at topics on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So some of the findings we had uh, was, we actually had a lot of grad students in this study, which I think does may impact that they were doing multiple searches for these items. Um, however, a lot of them still kind of were a bit confused about what was a DEI topic in their area. So 10 out of the 32, you know, basically just put, you know, their major and the words diversity, equity, and or inclusion. Um, we also asked them for recommendations for ways that we could make things easier for them to search and evaluate. Um, so a lot of them talked about search enhancement, you know, like filters and other tags uh, within the search that would be helpful. Um, but a lot of them also asked for help from librarians, things like specific areas on the library website uh, or research guides, or even just help, help with them trying to identify what is DEI in their field of study, or even just like promotion of resources that they may not be aware of. Uh, we did ask them at the end to gather kind of three resources that they thought would be good for them, and then ask them how did they evaluate the suitability of those resources. So 17 out of the 32 we're looking for that description aspect or abstract. Um, so that kind of goes back to that earlier finding where we weren't seeing often that description abstract. So that really does um, link back to that discoverability potential issue. So overall, the recommendations from both phases is, you know, looking to in the future, um, setting up some mutually beneficial partnerships with faculty, you know, having them help us look at um, some better ways of developing collection development criteria or identifying gaps in the DEI research um, and then building, you know, curated research guides, looking at better strategies uh, for helping faculty and student search and identify DEI resources, um, you know, improving that student engagement and having more targeted instruction. Um, we would love to rerun the UX testing kind of after we've implemented some of these. Um, recommendations like the research guides, you know, and maybe targeted different things to discovery and retrieval that we would be able to do um, that the participants suggested. Um, but also there's some kind of higher level ideas about research and advocacy to improve discoverability specifically for uh, DEI related materials that would definitely have to go beyond just Texas Tech. And I think the two common threads we really identified are these kind of big overarching questions. You know, how does the complexity of DEI research stymie researchers because it manifests differently according to the field of study? And then the second, how does current collect cataloging practices impact effective access and discoverability of DEI library resources? And then to wrap up, I'm going to have Esther go over some of the challenges and lessons learned that I think really um, come back to, to those concluding questions as well. 
Yeah, so um, we had a lot of challenges. <laughs> um, um, one the, for the first phase was we had low survey participation, no matter what iteration of the survey. We, I think we tried two or three iterations of the survey targeting specific emails, specific areas, and we still had low participation with our faculty who were DEI, uh, who represent DEI um, or represent underrepresented um, areas and or were teaching um, anything related to DEI. Um, and then uh, uh, the other iteration or one of the iterations was ta uh, targeting the department chair so that way we could get the DEI faculty to participate participate. Um, and that was very low. Um, and so I don't know if it was because it was during the beginning of the fall, if it they were not understanding what we needed or lack of, I don't know. I don't know what it could have been, but it was it was kind of um, um, I would say in my own words, depressing, because, you know, we want we want our faculty, we want to do do good for our faculty. We want to give them resources that they need for the, for for teaching. Um, another challenge was identification, searchability of DEI resources, materials. Um, it was it's even even to this day, it's hard to find a DEI just because you don't know what you're looking for. If you're looking for, you know, do those words need to specifically be in those cataloging records? Um, and or what, how do we go about doing that? Um, lack of DEI subject headings, uh, many records without added descriptive fields. Um, we, we are in ALMA right now. And I, I know when I was in, in that area at the time, a lot of the records are up, uh, whatever records they get, whenever we get new eBooks or whenever we get new items in, um, they just grab whatever is in, you know, Alma, the, the, the community um, where you just grab the records. And a lot of those records do not have, you know, uh, descriptions or descriptive subject headings or, or any of those things. And we are not in the, that I know of, um, since I changed over uh, to Rio, um, I don't know that, you know, they're including those or asking the, our, our people to do, do it manually, because I know that's a lot of work. Um, IRB process, the navigation of IRB process, um, campus policies, procedures, training involved. Um, it, it, we just had a lot, we just hit a lot of challenges along the way. Um, and then of course our funding was not included at the start of the research um, because we didn't know that we needed uh, funding until after COVID and we had to switch gears and then, you know, to get funding after the fact was, you know, a little bit taxing because um, uh, just, just having to reach out to our, our um, IRB people and getting, you know, in the middle of the process, it's like, er, you know, it's a big long process that you have to do. Um, and then uh, changes in direction of research, of course, we had to stop where we were at because we're not getting anywhere and then jump on to phase two um, and then even change that direction to from instruction to doing um, uh, working with Kimberly Vardaman and um, with UX. Uh, user usability um, so that way we can get our survey done um, so that pretty much wraps up what we what we did um, Sarah did you have any last minute remarks no just happy to take um, any questions about what we found and kind of some of our our conclusions and recommendations so I'm happy to read out any questions in the chat if um, uh, uh, if you would like to put a question in the chat. Um, I did have uh, a couple of questions for you guys if uh, if you don't mind. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think the survey was before the pandemic, uh, at least the first time that you were trying to to implement it. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that that is correct. We tried it uh, pre-pandemic, um, kind of. Yeah, it must have been fall 
maybe. maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I remember, yeah, I think like as Esther was talking about it, um, we did get some responses, but even in a lot of the responses, there was some confusion about, you know, what was DEI in their area even? Because ah, um, we were even asking kind of those questions, like kind of maybe identify some topics or would you like to talk to us about kind of the resources you use in the field? And, and I mean, even we got low participants, so we couldn't really say anything generalizable about because we had such low participation, but the responses we got back, we did get a lot of, um, I, don't, I don't know, or I'm not the person to ask that. Um, you know, that may have changed in intervening years as DEI has gained a bit of traction. Right. So it might be worth trying again, but it, yeah, it was a very frustrating process. How, how, how fascinating though. I think that that kind of speaks to some of your um, like lessons learned. So when you were describing that, that, user, uh, that user study where students are having trouble kind of expressing what or, or identifying what even is a, a DEI topic and, and maybe leveraging library instruction to help with that as well as the catalog. I mean, that uh, the, it seems like that's might also be the case with 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 faculty at, le at least at the moment what that's kind of an interesting uh thing to witness yeah I, I had not been expecting that that amount of kind of hesitancy about being able to to identify something that is di related yeah i would have thought like after after covid something like that would have been you know hesitant um i'm interested to find out whether or not they would be more um, willing to participate now. Ah, everything yes. that's going on. Yes. Um, like I want my voice to be heard or and or be the same. Like I'm scared. I don't want to I don't want to put my foot in the, you know, in there and then just get dragged along because I asked this question or I, I wanted this input. Um, so I would I would know. Um, yeah, it was interesting. Great, that's a great observation. I, I, I'm interested in that as well. Um, I have, um, actually, I have a question for, for, for you, Esther. So I know you've, you've transitioned from two different parts in the, the library. So I think when you started, you were in, uh, it looks like the, that systems uh, mm -hmm. area, and then you're transition, you've transitioned into that reference and instruction. Has that changed your perspective on this particular, uh, uh, this particular project? Uh, no, I've, I've okay. always worked with, I've always worked with um, diversity um, yes. and always pushed for, for things like this. I just didn't realize how bad it was um, yes. with regards to um, actually teaching people that there is a library, that we do have books. <laughs> I mean, I, I knew, but I didn't really know until I came <laughs> over to this side and and, and met with people and faculty that don't use the library and you're like, what? Um, and so I don't know if that also, you know, that they know that there's a library, but, you know, once a lot of the times faculty or um, some faculty, not all faculty, um, you know, once you can't help them with something, they're like, I don't wanna work with the library at all. I'm gonna do my own thing. And or they just they're so busy, they're so, you know, high level thinkers that they just don't even realize that that we exist and that we have these resources and they don't even, you know, they don't know to to come and check us out. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, there's it's been the same uh, thread of thought for myself. Like I always I always believe that the library could do a lot better. Uh, we do good, um, but we could do better. That's that's fascinating. I love that kind of insight. Um, it looks like we do have a question in the chat. Um, so where would you recommend your institution begin addressing some of the issues that you outlined? And are some of these being addressed in the larger institution? And I know in your draft report, you've, you've uh, talked a little bit about that. So I, I wanted to, to, to throw that out to you. Um, so our institution, um more recently, and especially after, no, it was during COVID because during COVID there was a lot of things happening as well. Um, there's been a more push for diversity DEI efforts. Uh, we do have the Office of Diversity, uh, Equity and Inclusion. 
um, and there they began um, just <laughs> they separated so that way there's people who focus on the students and there's people who focus on the faculty and staff cool. and then um, created these uh, lead fellows which I which I am I represent the the library in that and what they were I think what they're trying to do is is have that feed you know this is the diversity and then we're going to feed through and bleed through so that hopefully it we represent everybody and everybody's represented um it's slow going it's you know those are my thoughts nobody else's my thoughts uh to me it's kind of slow going um however i think for myself i would recommend that our institution you know if if you are a supporter of the library be a supporter of the library um give us that funding help us with funding help us find funding um so that way we can meet your needs um you know don't just say oh we're diversity we're you know you're doing diversity work you know like give us have that backbone give us that backbone give us that money so that way we can provide the resources and the materials and the spaces that you know our underrepresented representative minorities need um and that you know all of that would be bleed through and everybody would, you know, I won't say we would be all happy, but, you know, it's, it would be a, a start, you know, have that backbone, give us that funding, help us with whatever that we need so that way we can help you. Um, here, here, I, I, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Those are just my thoughts. I, mean, I could go on, but uh, Sarah, did you want to say something? Um, all I can say is kind of from uh, my perspective working in the architecture library um, and uh, with with the lead fellow so you know architecture has its own kind of diversity uh, committee and I have I've have been invited to um, speak with that group, uh, which was great. Um, and that was kind of my own initiative I created a research guide on social justice in the built environment that was trying to kind of from some of the things I, I saw from the study about faculty and students not really understanding what topics were available. So I kind of started some broader questions and pulling together resources. And I think that that has been a good outreach and engagement with both faculty and students and for courses. Um, and I've used that in instruction as well. And I think that that has, has really um, helped uh, me. As, as librarian, I hope it's helped the college as well. So I think um, one of the things that I really love about your project is using, you've got that that catalog kind of technical services piece, and then you have that reference and instruction piece together. I love that you pull these two facets together uh, to kind of help with that um, DEI work, um, that discoverability. And one of the things that I, I really enjoyed is, is your uh, recommendation to go back to the catalog and and implement some kind of tagging or um, some sort of uh, work in the catalog to help with that DEI work. Um, I I love that it's not um, it is not just uh, instruction, but it is also that kind of technical services piece coming together. Yeah, yeah I think we had a lot of former catalogers, including me, <laughs> on this group. It's great. Um, so that's kind of surfaced. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's been a fight for a little while now that, you know, to change the language first. And then, you know, that's one, that's just even one aspect of it, just to change some of the, the, the terminology that is used when you're cataloging. And then to include more, you know, robust descriptions. Um, so that way, you know, certain words, you know, if people are looking for certain things, it'll pop up. Um, but again, it's, these are things that we have to work on and work on with different people within the library and then to get admin and then not just admin, you know, it all starts, you know, with, um, I guess it just, you know, it's a lot of work and then to include, you know, this is LC cataloging and so it's, there's just a lot of um, work to be done with regard and it's never, it's never done. The EI work is never finished. Uh, so, yeah. I love that. That's such a great um, summative thought that it truly does never end. 
Um, so uh, I, I think we are approaching the end of our time. Uh, so uh, I just want to say thank you again. Um, your entire team has worked so hard on this, and I, I've, I've seen your, your, your work where you have gone back to the to the drawing board and yet you persist. So I wanna say thank you so much. I'm, I was so honored to kind of be witness to that journey and I really appreciate your work. I'm so glad um, that we're able to, to, to celebrate the work that you've done as well. Um, so thank you too and thank ARL for the opportunity to do this kind of research. All right, uh, so thank you so much. Um, I, I hope that this kind of inspires all of us uh, to, to also engage uh, uh, in this work. Um, I've got one kind of concluding thought. A lot of these projects were started uh, prior to uh, the murder of George Floyd and this crescendo of Black Lives Matter movements in the summer of 2020. And I know we're asking different kinds of questions now than we were a couple of years ago. Um, I love that our, our teams are brave enough to continue to persist in these questions. Um, uh, uh, and it's definitely inspired me to persist as well. So thank you again. Um, and I'll hand it back to you, Sue. Thank you.